Please be seated. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Despite the weather for our Divine Mercy, I'm exalted experience. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The parable of the two sons. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you killed the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I thank you again for joining us in this time of Eucharistic adoration with the Lord. Truly, after Mass, Eucharistic adoration is the most beautiful prayer because we remain with the Lord in the Eucharist. Oftentimes, when I may feel like I'm at my own wit's end, it's simply just being before the Lord, Eucharistic adoration, I can feel the Lord mending and healing my own heart. There's something about just being before the face of mercy, of Christ himself, that is healing, that lifts us back up. 
So today as we enter into the theme of divine mercy, I've selected Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. This parable of two sons and their father as a message of mercy for us. In a sense, as a priest, when I hear confessions, there's no greater thing that people bring to confession than the gift of their relationships, and especially their relationships with their family, with their own father and mother, or sister or brother, or sons and daughters. Because really the family is the core unit of society, but also the family is the image of the Trinity. The family is the image of God's love. And since God gave us the family as the first and foremost place that we would receive love and give love, encounter love, and model love. And so, throughout the centuries, the parable of the lost son has touched so many hearts, but touches on the heart of mercy and the heart of the family. Pope Benedict XVI retitled this parable that is often called the parable of the prodigal son or the lost son, with the focus being on the son that went off and spent his father's inheritance and came back to his father. But Pope Benedict XVI retitled it the parable of the two sons. Because he said, more importantly, this parable of the two sons summarized the entire salvation history from the beginning. He said the parable of the two sons, this elder son and the younger son who ran off and came back, reaches all the way back to Cain and Abel in our salvation history. And it follows the path of Ishmael and Israel and goes all the way throughout the salvation history of Israel, the chosen people of God, and their pagan nations that were their neighbors and oftentimes their contenders and enemies. Since Philip 16 says that this parable of two sons shows throughout all of salvation history two parallel tracks of those who followed God and those who were the Gentiles and the pagans. That at the heart of man there has always been conflict from the very beginning. The very first conflict that we saw with Cain and Abel. And so today, in our reflection of mercy, I'll focus on the two sons. We see here first the younger son, who dares to ask his father for his inheritance as a young man. Hopefully this has never happened before. I've never heard of it happening before. Could you imagine your college-age student coming and asking you for half your house, half of your savings, half of your everything, before he even had a career, before he even went and studied and had his first job? He had the audacity to ask his father for his inheritance. And his father gave it to him. So he took his inheritance and he went off to the city and he squandered it, living on prostitutes and, and wealth and many other passions, and he lost his inheritance. So much so that he had to go to a farmer and ask if he could tend the swine, the pigs. And he even said how he longed to eat of the pea pods of the pigs. So that's the first son. The son with the audacity to ask for his inheritance as a young man and squandered it all and found himself destitute. The first son. While the first son is off in the city, while we don't hear much about the second son, we can venture to make a couple comments. As we heard the second son tell his father 
Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. The elder son never left his father's side. He remained on the form, waking up early every day, diligently carrying out his father's orders to tend the family job. The elder son was faithful day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out. Every day he was faithful, carrying out his orders, and he was dutiful. But yet something happened, because when the younger son returns and is welcomed, the elder son becomes angry and furious. So something was awry. The elder son looked like he had it all together. He looked like his life was perfect. But we can tell by his reaction to his younger son that something was not right. It was not all as perfect as it seemed. So just to comment also about the father. And to me, the father of the two sons is the most interesting figure. The father has such love. The father who is willing to give his inheritance early to the younger son. The father who was charitable. The father who was giving. As a father, we have to give much to our children. And the father in our parable today gave much to his younger son without counting the cost. And then when the younger son returns, the father shows unbelievable mercy, saying, slaughter the fattened calf, put a signet ring on his finger and a robe on his back and sandals on his feet. The father who says to the elder son, who is jaded and does not want to join the party of celebration for the return of the younger son, the father says to the elder son, My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. For our reflection this evening, after a, another song to invite us into worship, we're going to have an extended moment of silence where I'm going to lead us in a guided meditation of the two sons, the younger son and the elder son, and their relationship with each other and with their father. But briefly, since I'll be focusing on the two sons, I'd like to just conclude with a couple of thoughts on the father. This father, in this parable of the two sons, this father is an image of God the Father. The two sons will be each different types of images of us. But the father is an image of God, and God as Father. I would just like to highlight the heart of mercy of this father. This father lended generously to the younger son, gave him half his inheritance early. And then when his younger son came down the horizon, up the path, returning to the form, in a tradition, a custom where you had to greet your elders and, and come to them and the elders never went out to you, this elder father runs to his son. In a Jewish tradition where they have many customs and different types of pilates, the father embraces and, and hugs and even kisses his son. This father shows no judgment. There is not an ounce of judgment in this father. I hope we can reflect tonight on the love that this father shows. This father who loved with mercy 
and loved without counting the cost. So much so that once again, he said to the elder son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. That's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. The whole of nature. you to be comfortable in your pews. I invite you just to find yourself comfortable and relaxed in your pew, your feet flat on the ground, your legs relaxed, laying on the pew, relaxed. Our midsections relaxed. Our upper body, our shoulders loose and relaxed. Our heads loose and relaxed. I invite you, if you would like, to close your eyes. For those who would feel led or would like to, to lay your, your hands open and your, your arms at your side, a posture of receptivity of the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill the hearts of your faithful and candle in them the fire of your love. Set the seal of your mercy upon them. Fill us with your merciful love on this holy night in the presence of your face of mercy. Invite us to 
Enter into the gift of imagination tonight, Lexio Divina. Tonight I'm going to set the stage for the younger son and the elder son, the parable of the two sons. I'm going to invite us to ask the Holy Spirit to guide our imagining, our prayer, our reflection. First we'll consider the younger son, and then we'll consider the elder son. We'll consider the thoughts and, and feelings of each of them. And then how that impacts us, how maybe we can identify with them. And then we'll take a time of silence. At any point you want to reference your handout, there are also a couple of reflection questions to reflect on the two sons. The younger son. The younger son lived more in his passion. He was selfish and prideful. The younger son was, was chasing after something. We're not sure what it was, nor do we have to know what it was. For all of us are seeking something in our lives. You can imagine the younger son as a young man was restless. That he had restless energy. This restless energy drove him to, to ask his father for half his inheritance. So he could rush off to the city looking for something. But not knowing what he was looking for. And he gets what he asks for in his inheritance. And he goes to the city. And he goes down every street corner and he goes into every tavern and every place of amusement that a young man might go. And in night after night, day after day, week after week, month after month, he goes, goes, and goes, looking, looking, and looking and searching, still not knowing what he's looking for, still trying to find something, but not knowing what that something is. And he never finds it. All of that restless energy, all spent day after day, and he comes up shorthanded loses everything he had, becomes destitute, tends swine, and yearns to eat of the pea pods of the swine. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt at a loss? Having searched for something but not having found it. Perhaps tonight, you're still searching. The younger son wasn't sure what he was looking for, but after enough time passed, of not having what he was looking for, not having the peace and the joy that he thought he would find in the city. He thought to himself, I can return to my father as this hired servant. At least then I will have enough food to eat and to live. Have you ever been there? Searching for something, willing to, to take anything, anything to calm the unrest, anything to heal the pain, anything to take away the anxiety, even to just be a hired servant 
instead of the Father's Son. Have you ever been there? Are you there now? Seeking something. Something to feel better. Imagine yourself as the younger son. What are you searching for? Where are you looking for it? Have you found it? What keeps you from finding what you're seeking? Scripture says to ask, seek, and knock. The door shall be opened. Have we asked, and have we sought, and have we knocked? And has the door been opened? If perhaps the door has not been opened, what is between our hearts and opening that door to God's mercy and his love, to the happiness and joy that we seek. What was in the heart of the younger son? The younger son who said, I can go back to my father's home as a hired servant, but not as his son. Which would you rather be? The son, the beloved son of the father, the son who is embraced and kissed by his father, the son who receives a signet ring and a robe and sandals, or would you rather be a hired servant? Lord Jesus, I pray that you remove the shame and guilt 
that I've experienced in life. Lord Jesus, I pray that in the mistakes and the failings that I have made in life, that you receive me as you received the younger son, that you would hold me and love me and grasp me in the bosom of your mercy, that I may be forgiven, that I may be found worthy to be called your son and not your hired servant.
again be comfortable just sit back in your pew just invite you to take a deep breath in and to breathe out and just to relax we've considered the younger son and we consider the more interesting character of the elder son The elder son, as it's said in the scripture, was always with his father, had never left his side. Yet when the younger son came, the elder son showed no mercy. He was not able to receive the gift and rejoice in his father's love. The younger son who was lost and was now found, who was dead and was now alive. It begs the question, was the elder son ever alive? When the father comes to invite the elder son to the party, it says that the elder son had felt like a slave, that he had slaved and carrying out his father's work over the years. He didn't carry out his father's work with joy. He felt like he was slaving. The elder son's an example of not being in touch with ourselves, perhaps not being honest at times with our true desires, Maybe not even knowing what our true desires are. Scripture says to be, not to be lukewarm, but to be hot or cold. Scripture says if you're lukewarm, God will spew you out of his mouth. Jesus said, I've come to call sinners, not saints. I've not come for the righteous, but to show mercy to the sinners. The mercy of God is the true heart of the Gospels. The mercy of the Father is what Jesus Christ came to reveal. And reveal he did in the mercy he showed sinners. The prodigal son was, was cold, but yet God could work with him because he was searching. But the elder son was lukewarm to be spewed out of God's mouth. He was not searching. He was not looking. He had denied himself. The elder son had denied his own happiness. The elder son no longer searched for adventure, no longer searched for happiness, for meaning in life. But he had just enslaved himself to nothing when his heart had become bitter and cold. God would prefer to work with one who has become a sinner that is hungry 
hungry for something, so that God could present himself to him. A sinner may become the saint. But for one whose heart is cold, that is turned off, that is jaded in life, filled with unforgiveness, filled with remorse for past hurts. For such a one, it is difficult to receive mercy because we are not searching, we are not wanting to encounter mercy. But we place the wall between us and God. And that is why we do not encounter Him. Lord Jesus, we pray tonight that you would level those walls, that your Eucharist of mercy would grace us with a profound gift of your love, of your acceptance. Because even the Father loved the elder son as he loved both of his sons equally As he said to the elder son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. God the Father poured his entire divine life into his son and gave his son to us. And Jesus, his son, said to us, All that I have has been given unto me by my Father. I have not lost one that he has entrusted to me. All that the Father has has been given to each one of us. All that the God who created all things, who loved all things into being, all that the God who sustains by his love and his power and majesty all things and orders all things that are created good. That God, that power, that life, that love, loves you unconditionally infinitely and with mercy and forgiveness. There is nothing that God does not forgive. He forgave a son who squandered his inheritance and he asked an elder son to receive his love. The elder son could not forgive his younger brother because he was jealous of the blessings that his younger brother received. Time and time again, his younger brother was blessed and received from the father, but the elder brother received nothing from the father. But the elder brother never asked the father for anything because the elder brother didn't love himself and he didn't believe that he could receive from the father the joy and happiness that he also sought in life, but did not know how to find it. Dear brothers and sisters, if you find yourself tonight as the elder brother, ask and receive, and it shall be given unto you. As the Father told him, all that I have is yours. It always has been. I have never left you. I have been by your side always and forever. But you have not asked. You say that you want a goat to celebrate with your friends, but you never asked me for one. Ask and you will receive. The Lord wants to bless us with our happiness tonight and with the joy and peace and rest that our souls desire and our hearts cling to and need. All that the Father has 
is available to us tonight on this altar. All that could ever be, all that we could ever have, all that can fill us in life, all that can complete us and make us full is before us tonight in the face of mercy and the Eucharist. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. My dear children, believe in me tonight. Believe in my promise that I have all that you need and all that you could ever want. Ask of me tonight for whatever you want and it shall be given to you. Yeah. 
your love to those around me. to our hearts the light of faith and the fire of love, that we may worship in spirit and in truth, our God and Lord, present in the sacrament, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please kneel.
the divine praises, please repeat the following invocations after me. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin, and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Please be seated. Justin, can we get some lights? I mean, you got two really bright ones up there right now. I can see them. They're there. <laughs> I can't see y'all, but I can see the light. Maybe that time has come in my life. I see the light. <laughs> Once again, thank y'all for um, you know, coming out. You know, we always come for our community celebrations. Um, First and foremost, our, our Sunday celebration of the Eucharist and all of our other opportunities to gather as a um, community as a St. Genevieve Parish. But um, there's always been something special about Eucharistic adoration. And it's just um, a place to truly just, um, you know, encounter the Lord and, and to be with Him um, in a personal way. So um, what we did tonight was a little different. It was a little bit more of um, what we call that Lexio Divina, um, that divine reading where we kind of did a St. Ignatius style of Lexio Divina tonight where we try to kind of place ourselves in the character, you know? That's a real beautiful way to pray and something you can do at home. You know, in your own um, prayer space at home, you can set up your cross and your holy candle and kick back your recliner and, you know, pick any of the gospel stories, especially the parables where um, Jesus uses these different characters, oftentimes images of um, his presence and you just put yourself in the place of the character. You imagine the scene, let it come alive to you. And um, oftentimes that's how people 
have their real first personal encounter with the Lord by just allowing those characters um, in Scripture to come alive um, for them. So that's part of our goals here and Exalted is to um, give us different experiences of prayer um, because our church is so rich in her treasury of prayers. So um, please continue to give us your feedback. Let us know how tonight went. This was our third Exalted. And, um, you know, let us know how we're doing. And um, we've done a couple um, different ones. You know, tonight, kind of focusing on mercy um, through the two um, parable of the two sons. Um, next week, we'll gather once again in May, and we'll be doing um, Mary, a Marian-themed um, Exalted. And also, let us know if you want Exalted in June and July. So uh, that's one decision we have to make, whether or not we're going to... Um, have a June and July um, summer sessions or just kick it back up in September. So um, please let us know if you want to meet during um, the summer. So, so I offer our gratitude to Justin um, Rodri for beautiful music and drawing us into worship. As always, thank you, Justin. Thank you to Jessica for um, helping promote our, our night on our um, social media. And um, hey, everybody on social media. It's been an hour and a half. I don't know if you're still with us or not. We still have people with us, just uh, so. Thanks for joining, guys. I hope it was good for you. And we want your feedback, too. So please shoot us a little message on our wall and let us know what you thought about tonight. Or let us know if you want one in June and July. We'll, we'll stream it for you um, if you would like it. And just let us know um, what types of prayer you would like to experience. And we can have different types of Lexio um, experiences. So hope it was a good night for everyone. Thank you all again um, for coming out. I don't hear any rain, so... It should be a, an easy ride home. Um, please continue to keep Father Eric Fable in your players as he um, ought to be home with his mom and sister right about now. So we um, offer great gratitude for that. And um, can we have one last song, Justin, maybe? Sure. Awesome. If y'all want to stand, then we'll just have a closing song. What are you turning to? There's no one like